Hi everyone, Mrs V here. And today we are going to talk about thermochemistry. So time to get the whiteboard on and get into it. Thermochemistry, this is the study of heat changes in chemical reactions. And we use a particular word when we're studying heat changes in chemical reaction, and that is the word enthalpy. Enthalpy, and we give it the symbol, a capital H, that is the sum of all the potential energy and all the kinetic energy of the atoms or the molecules in a specified amount of substance. Normally it's in a mole for chemistry. Now this is a very, very abstract concept. So it's abstract. You can't, over here I've got my temperature probe and you can't go sticking your temperature probe into a molecule and expect to get some reading. So we don't have an enthalpy probe that we can just stick into a molecule to get an idea what it is. So it's not really a measurable. Not really measurable at all. It's very abstract. What we tend to do in chemistry is we talk about enthalpy changes. And when we're talking about enthalpy changes, we use this little delta sign. Delta means change in. So whenever you see that delta, whether it's delta T or delta H, it just means change in. So delta H just talks about the change in enthalpy. Now, the great thing about the change in enthalpy is that we can relate it mathematically to temperature. And that means we can start to do some measurements involving this. So we have a measurable quantity because we can relate it to temperature. Now, there are two, when it comes to heat changes, there are two different types of reactions. There are exothermic reactions and there are endothermic reactions. And these are words that you're going to need to know. We started talking about them way, way back, uh, probably when you were in year eight, but we're going to start to define them really carefully now. So an exothermic reaction releases heat to the surroundings. Okay, so in exothermic reactions make heat. Okay, they give off heat. Now what that means is that whatever the reaction is being held in, whether it's a test tube or a beaker, or whether it's just the water that the substances are in, that gets hot. So the surroundings get hot. So your test tube gets hot here. But of course, the law of conservation of energy says that heat that's made the test tube get hot had to come from somewhere. And it's come from the substances that are doing the reacting. So overall, we're going to end up with the substances having less energy because some of it has gone out into making the test tube get hot. So in an exothermic reaction, the substances end up with less energy. Contrasting to this is our endothermic reaction. And an endothermic reaction absorbs heat from the surroundings. So what you'll notice if you're doing an endothermic reaction is your test tube is going to get cold. And that's because heat that was in the test tube glass or that was in the water that's in the test tube has been sucked in to the substances in the reaction. So in this one, the substances end up with more energy. So they are the two different types of reaction. So we know that 
exothermic re an exothermic reaction is happening if your test tube is getting hotter or if the solution that is in the test tube is getting hotter and an endothermic reaction is happening if the test tube is getting colder. We often in thermochemistry show these changes on what's called an energy profile diagram. And this one's really cool because this one is actually animated. So we start off with the reactants having a certain amount of energy. Okay, I'm going to stop, going to stop the fancy thing now. So there's a certain, when we have the reactants here, what we're seeing this energy over here on our energy axis. So this is our energy axis there'll be a certain value, and this is normally measured in joules or kilojoules. And this is what we call the total sum of all of the enthalpies of all of the substances in the reactants. Then we see this rise in energy. Now you may remember from last year that we talked about a concept called activation energy. So the amount of energy you've got to put in to a reaction to get it to start is called the activation energy. So this amount of energy here would be your activation energy. And you'll remember that's because the reactants have to have enough energy to break their bonds on collision. So what we see is the reactants colliding. They're up here at the very top of the curve. We have what's called the activated complex. Now this is also not, it, this is also a very abstract thing. This is when the bonds in the reactants have broken. But you can't like get a beaker of activated complex. You can never actually, you know, isolate the activated complex. So this is when all the bonds in the reactants have been broken. And then what we see happen is that new bonds form. And what colour will we have for new bonds forming? We'll go green for new bonds forming. So what we see here is energy being released there. As the new bonds form. And that's what makes the products. So you have, in a reaction, you have to put some energy in and then you get some energy out. And the heat of reaction is simply the difference between where you started and where you finished, or it's the energy you got out minus the energy you had to put in. And this is what we call delta H here. This difference between where you started and where you ended up, that's what we call delta H. So the enthalpy change, which is delta H, is the difference between the reactants and the products. And if we go over here, this would be the total enthalpy of the products. Now, we don't always see energy profile diagrams drawn the same way. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples where the energy profile diagram looks a little bit different. So sometimes the energy profile diagram is shown um, without the curve. So here we have the, still we have the total enthalpy of the reactants. And over here, well, I guess it's about there, yeah, about there, that's the total energy of the products. Or the enthalpy, I should say, of the products. 
So here we see the energy being put into break bonds, which we know is the activation energy and the energy release when new bonds are made. And delta H is this bit here in between the starting and the ending. Now, here, the products have ended up being lower in energy than the reactants. So that means the substances that are reacting have actually experienced a loss in energy. And where did that energy go? Well, that's the energy that went into heating up the test tube. So this is an exothermic reaction. So where we say this, the energy is not really lost, I guess. Whoa, whoops. Am I getting it back? Thank you. So it's not lost, but it's just transferred. And it's tr transferred to the surroundings. The surroundings might be water, test tube, things like that. So you're actually going to feel them get hot. So this is what an exothermic reaction energy profile looks like, exothermic. So we have the reactants are at a higher level than the products. If we look at the next diagram, we have the endothermic reaction. And we can see this because here's where the total enthalpy of the reactants is. And here is where the products are. So that's the total enthalpy of the products. And in this one, the products are at a higher energy level than the reactants. And that means that there's been the substances in the reaction have actually gained some energy. And where did that energy come from? You can't just have energy appear. So that energy had to have come from the surroundings. So it had to come from maybe the water that solutions that were reacting, or maybe it came from the test tube. And if you're going to take energy out of the surroundings, they're going to feel cold. So the extra energy was transferred from the surroundings. Now the surroundings feel cold because they have less energy. This is an endothermic reaction. And you know when the products are up higher on the energy profile than the reactants, you're looking at an endothermic reaction. Now, if you're looking at those drawn with curves, then an exothermic starts here, activation energy ends up and ends up lower. So this is exothermic. And if you're looking at an endothermic, starts here, activation energy 
but finishes up higher in the products. So that's what an endothermic would look like. I think that's enough for this particular video. We'll be continuing our study of thermochemistry in our next video. I'll see you next time.